I'm gonna share with you why some businesses are absolutely crushing it with social media, but why the vast majority are failing miserably, wasting their time, energy, and money doing things they have no business of doing that are providing zero or maybe even negative returns. My goal here today is simple, to provide you with the tools and the strategies and the secrets behind what actually works today in the real world so you can do more of that and less of all the garbage that's being preached online that has absolutely no effect on your business. All right, let's get to it. Hey there, my name is Adam Earhart, marketing strategist and welcome to The Marketing Show. All right, there is no secret here that there is a ton of misinformation being tossed around the internet, which is already kind of infamous for having a ton of misinformation on it, but probably no subject is up with as much garbage as we're seeing with social media marketing, and specifically some of the advice that's being shared that's just completely irrelevant or useless or at worst, even damaging. That's right, I used to say that pretty much anything was better than nothing until I started to see what some of the anything was involving. And some of the anything really wasn't that good. And not only is it not being useful, not driving your business forward, some of it may actually be hurting your business and taking it a few steps back, causing damage to your brand and to your reputation and to your overall social media strategy. So with all that said, let's dive right into the things that are actually working today so you can go out there and do them and apply them in your business and start to see some immediate and positive results. Starting with number one, one of the biggest mistakes that I see businesses make is not being in the right place. Networking is all about who you know, but influence, especially in the realm of social media, is all about who knows you. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is listening to the advice that you need to be everywhere and you need to do everything. The reality is, is that your ideal target market, that person that you're actually trying to connect with and to serve, they're not everywhere, they're not doing everything, so neither should you. Rather, you should be strategic and selective and only go where they are, avoiding pretty much all of the other platforms because these are what I call the marketing wasteland. And they're really just time, energy, and money sucks designed to sort of lead you off the path and drag you down all sorts of different avenues and rabbit holes that you have no business of being on and then again are just wasting everybody's time. The key here is you need to go where your people are and your people are your audience and your customers and those people that like you and follow you and hopefully buy from you some point in the future. Trying to be everywhere and trying to do everything, that's one of the fastest ways to burn yourself out. And this is definitely a strategy that I tried nearly a decade ago when I was first getting involved in online marketing and digital marketing and social media marketing. And I took that advice to heart and I thought I had to do everything all the time. And what it led to is me being spread way too thin across all of these different channels, many of which, most of which, pretty much led nowhere. The bright side here is that I was able to kind of narrow down and focus in on where I was getting the best returns for my dollar. However, I could have just done that without all the effort by being strategic and really just thinking through, all right, where are my customers? What am I good at? What do I enjoy? And then kind of lining everything up, which would have made it really clear and really easy to decide. The next big mistake that I see way too many business owners and entrepreneurs and even marketers make when it comes to social media marketing and marketing in general is really just not providing enough value. We've all met those people who seem to just talk just to hear themselves talk and they never really stop and you really are kind of trying to figure out what they're even saying or why you should even care, even though most of the times you don't care. Well, that's how I like to think of most businesses' social media marketing. When I go through it, when I evaluate it, when I audit it, whether it's for research purposes or for a client, a lot of the time, I have a really hard time trying to distill and trying to mine any golden nuggets. And sure, they might be in there somewhere, but overall, it's just a lot of fluff. That is not what you want. And a lot of that stems from the advice of trying to be everywhere and do everything because the reality is if you're being everywhere and doing everything, you're gonna run out of good stuff eventually and you end up just kind of subconsciously filling your content with fluff and with way too much stuff that really isn't relevant to your market. And therein lies the key, content that's relevant to your market. This is probably the best advice that I can give you on this subject when it comes to creating valuable content. Valuable content is going to be subjective depending on what type of people you're serving and what type of business you're in and what kind of market you're in and all that, but what you can make sure of, what you can always do to provide that value is really make sure that it's relevant to that person. 
Always put yourself in your ideal customer's shoes. Be empathetic to their pains and to their problems. Try to understand where they're coming from and try to give them content that would be valuable and relevant to them. Now, of course, to do this, you're gonna have to have a pretty deep understanding of who your ideal target market is, but that's kind of marketing 101. So at the end of this video, I'll make sure to link up the very next piece of the puzzle that you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out. But for now, a real quick subject here is that you wanna make sure you dial in that ideal target market's miracles and miseries. Their miracles being their wants, their dreams, their goals, their aspirations, everything that they're going after, and their miseries being all their fears and their frustrations and their nightmares and all of the pains and problems they're trying to move away from. The better that you understand their miracles and their miseries, and most importantly, who it is that they're trying to become, the change that they're trying to make, well, the better that your content is really going to align with them, the more relevant it's gonna be and the more valuable it's going to be. The next thing when it comes to providing value is you should always try to get your content to do one of two, hopefully even both things, in that you should try to either educate them or entertain them or some mythical, magical combination of both. This channel right here is the perfect example of an educational channel. My goal here above all else is to educate you and to arm you with the tools and the strategies and the tactics and everything that I've learned over the years of being a marketer to help equip you with the greatest chance of success. If you're entertained, that's fantastic and that's a nice side benefit, but it's certainly not my primary goal. So I always make sure that I try to provide as much value in my content as possible. On that note, if you're finding this content valuable in any way, shape, or form, all I ask is that you hit that thumbs up button, which really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now here's something that not a lot of people are gonna tell you when it comes to providing value, especially when creating content for social media, in that those who can afford to play the long game almost always end up winning. The reason is the best kind of content you can possibly create is the kind of content and the kind of value where you give with no expectation of getting anything in return. I know. It's a really hard concept to grasp. Essentially what I'm asking you to do here is just give away everything that you've got, pour your heart out, serve to the absolute best of your ability, and expect to get nothing back. Now here's the deal. You will get something back. In fact, you'll get way more back than you ever put in. But I have no idea how long that's gonna take. So you do have to have some kind of element of faith or trust or belief or Again, really just kind of hoping that this is all gonna pay off because statistically and historically speaking, this is a fantastic strategy that almost always pays off, but you do have to give kind of from that uh, selfless point of view, you really have to try to serve and really try to provide as much value as you can. All right, this next concept I wanna call not speaking to the right level. And it's a bit fuzzy because I've never articulated it or explained it to anyone outside of my private clients. So bear with me because I assure you the concept here is phenomenally valuable. It can really serve you well. Fair warning though, it is a little bit more advanced. So I'll try to do my best to keep it as simple as possible. But when you're marketing to someone, you essentially have all sorts of different levels of a person. You've got their surface level stuff, you've got some of the deeper emotional stuff, and then you've got the really deep emotional stuff. And what can happen here is a lot of novice marketers, a lot of new business owners or new entrepreneurs who've never really run marketing or advertising campaigns before, they tend to want to go with that surface level, superficial type of content and really just check off a few boxes saying, yeah, this is marketing and these are some of the problems that they've got and then call it a day. But what I'd like to challenge you to do is to take it a step further and ideally a few steps further depending on how deep you really wanna go. The way that I like to describe this here is as a pyramid. So the very first level that you can appeal to someone, you can kind of stereotype them for lack of a better word, you can uh, identify them or segment them or put them in a niche for your marketing, is that demographic level. And this is the lowest level of marketing possible. It's still effective, but let's be honest, it's pretty superficial. Demographic details are gonna be things like someone's age, someone's gender, their income, their occupation, their title, those type of things. Now, if you want to take it a step further, you can start to take a look at their psychographic details. These are going to be kind of all the head things, like what are their attitudes and their beliefs and their affiliations and their organizations and groups, other things that they're a part of, their political viewpoints, their religious viewpoints, all the stuff that's not polite to talk about. That's the kind of level that you wanna to go to when you're really trying to figure out how to appeal to someone and what's going on between their ears. 
But if you really want to get good and take it a step further, you want to take a look at their identity. And there's two different levels of identity that you can take a look at. The first is their current identity. These are things that they would use to describe themselves, their views that they have about themselves. It's really the vision and the model and the personification of who they are as a person. And this is incredibly powerful because identity is a really powerful concept to try to appeal to. But there's a step further. If you want to go one step higher and really elevate it, you can go after their aspirational identity. This is their ideal identity. This is the person that they want to be, the person that they're seeking to become, and the kind of person that they've always visioned that they might have the chance of being. And if you can make your marketing tailored towards that vision, then you're really onto something. But of course, all of this is easier said than done, which explains why so many people just go for those basic demographic details and just stop there. So I really want to challenge you to push again for that psychographic, for that identity, either the current identity or ideally that aspirational identity. Whew, that's a mouthful. All right, another massive mistake that I see many small businesses and entrepreneurs and marketers even make is mistaking the fact that people don't like doing business with businesses, they like doing business with people. Which means that if you want your social media to succeed, you have to understand the social element of the media. Meaning, being a lot more personal, a lot more human, a lot more authentic, and a lot more engaging. I was watching a YouTube video with Chris from the future, and if you've never seen his challenge before, I'll make sure to link it up in the description box below, because it's pretty cool. Regardless, he was in this video talking about the four traits of an attractive personality, and I thought they were fantastic, so I want to highlight them here. The first of which was a compelling backstory. Now, the beauty is, is that we all have stories. Everyone. Even people who've lived pretty boring lives have some element of interest or intrigue or something that's happened to them that shaped them into who they are today. So don't hide it, don't run away from it, rather expand on it, tell your story, make sure to share. All of it is what makes you who you are and makes you interesting. The next element is character flaws. And again, this comes down to being authentic and being human and being relatable and really just being you. None of us are perfect, and anybody that tries to pretend that they are, well, it's pretty easy to see through, so embrace your character flaws and just be yourself. The third element is parables. And these are the stories that you use to tell about you, about what it is that you do, about the results that you deliver, about your business, about your life, about whatever. Essentially, it's your unique collection of stories, and the beauty is, is they all kind of tie together to form your viewpoint and to form your personality, and they're unique to you. And then the fourth element is to be polarizing. Essentially, you have to take a stand. You have to stand for something. You don't want to be right in the middle because the middle is boring, it's bland, it's vanilla. Sure, everybody might be like, no, all right, they're okay, but nobody's really going to fight for what you have to say and it just makes you come off as, well, it's disingenuous as well because nobody's really that wishy-washy. We all have viewpoints. We all have opinions. For example, I started this video by saying the advice to be everywhere and do everything was crazy, ineffective, just a waste of time. That's kind of polarizing in a marketing sense because there's a lot of people who subscribe very strongly to that camp. So by being willing to take a stance, I might offend a few people, albeit kind of gently, but on the other hand, those who are like, yeah, I don't want to be everywhere, I don't want to do everything, well, they're going to come even more strongly onto my camp. All right, the next thing you're going to want to do is check out the video I have linked up right here on Introduction to Marketing. So make sure to check that out now, and I'll see you in the next episode. PR, market research, social media, content marketing, search engine marketing or search engine optimization, pricing and pricing psychology.